Okay, Greg. Uh, I'm not sure how to wire you in here. Let me just. Can you talk a bit? No. One sec. Are you sure you. Can you say something? Uh, wait, the HMI. Wait, it's the HMI. Okay, so questions, general singularity or Kubernetes or Docker or Linux containers or about the weather, it's hot outside. Any questions? Just shoot. So how good is performance isolation? Is uh, Kubernetes aware of it because you mentioned affinity? Sorry, could you... Um, I mean, it's just a... I don't have much experience, but how about this performance isolation in containers, and what can you do to avoid, for instance, uh, that some latency-sensitive applications will suffer? I mean, it's not classical HPC question. <laughs> um. I mean, in terms. Oh, sorry, it's too loud. Um, I mean, you, you, can, you can, with C groups, you can constrain any container, right? You can say um, you are only allowed to run on. Process one, and you are only allowed to uh, on processor one, and the other one is allowed to run on another a different processor. You can also uh, tune the the scheduler of the kernel and tell him that he's only allowed to give out so much shares to one container and another part of shares to the other container. Um, but that's all the constraints you can put in, right? With the isolation part, with Linux container or kernel namespaces, it's not really, um, yeah, it just isolates, but not constrains the performance use. You can only do what you can do with C groups. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I think, what there is to say about it. So I, I have a question for Greg. Can you hear me, Greg? Is it even allowed? Yeah, like, yeah I can hear you. <laughs> oh, it's OK. <laughs> uh, I, I was given a question earlier about the timeline of Kubernetes integration into, into Singularity and, and what we're looking for on that. Could you maybe expand on that a bit? Uh, yeah, we're looking for help. Um, we're hiring, <laughs> if anybody is interested. Um, we have some people on staff that's already working on it and considering how to do this, uh, but I have a feeling we're going to need more help. Um, so the timeline is basically as soon as possible. <laughs> and as soon as we get help. I can't really expand on it that much more than that. Okay. Other questions? There was talk about um, integration of singularity or somehow um, uh, interaction of singularity with uh, OpenMPI. Could you comment on that? I couldn't hear the question if it was for me. The, yeah, the question was could you comment on the, the integration or interaction of singularity and OpenMPI? <laughs> yeah, um, this is this is it's fairly complicated. I can be as, I can be pretty brief, uh, but I can also talk about it for a couple hours. So um, I'll, I'll try to be as, as, as brief as, as possible. So um, you have on any particular HPC resource, you have a resource manager. You also have an MPI that's associated with that resource manager, and they're they're coupled in a way. I mean, there's a communication between the host-based MPI and the resource manager. So knowing that. Um, Singularity takes an approach which, which I call a hybrid MPI approach, which basically you have the, an MPI that sits on the outside of the container, which basically is the host-based MPI. Now that MPI, remember, is the MPI that is associated with the resource manager. So there's a communication between the resource manager to the host-based MPI. The host-based MPI then is going to call Singularity uh, for each of the processes, the, each of the MPI processes that it wants to invoke inside the container. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to describe when I actually have a, a picture or a whiteboard or something. So if you can try to imagine it in your head, the command's going to look like MPI run singularity exec 
container name, and then the program inside the container, the MPI program inside the container that you want to execute. Now what's gonna happen is the MPI on the host is gonna spin off singularity containers, one for each process per host that it needs to, to spin up. Now singularity then is gonna build up the kernel, build up the kernel namespaces, build up the mounts, and build up every, the, the whole environment that it needs for those uh, for the application inside the container to run then it's going to exec into the container the application that you're calling and that exec is really interesting because what it does is it ex singularity execs itself out of existence so singularity actually is no longer running on your system it ends up being just the contained process so what's really cool about this now is that contained process gets executed. It links against the libraries, the open MPI libraries on the inside of the container. And those open MPI libraries on the inside of the container reach back out to the calling MPI via something called the process management interface, PMI. Now PMI allows the communication between the contained MPI and what's on the host. Remember what's on the host is also interacting with your resource manager. So you end up basically completing the whole cycle just using singularity as a vector kind of in the middle of it. But it ends up going away anyway. And then as soon as that process ends, um, because the kernel namespaces are associated with um, process IDs, and as soon as those process IDs go away, the kernel cleans up all the namespaces, it cleans up all the mounts and everything that singularity did. So there's not even a need for a cleanup process. Long story, kind of short. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Did that, that, was did nice. that make sense? Nice. Cool. We have one minute. Let's make it two minutes. <laughs> Some more questions. You guys can tell me how good the beer is over there. <laughs> Very good. You should come. Yeah. <laughs> Next Maybe time you should go. come. Or are you not allowed to travel anymore? <laughs> oh yeah, they don't. They don't let me travel. But it's mostly because of time. It just takes too much time. Some more questions. Otherwise, I will bullshit. Oh. So maybe another question. Um, basically, one of the things which is uh, somewhat making supporting Singularity somewhat hard is that it is not trivial to debug things and to profile things from an HPC point of view. So could you give some hints there? Did you understand? Did you get the question? I only was able to get little tiny bits and pieces. Um, so the question was, uh, how, what are your hints um, for debugging and profiling an application running within uh, Singularity? Oh, yeah, that's a trick. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it's a little bit tricky because you can't use host-based um, uh, profilers and debuggers and whatnot, you actually have to have it inside the container. Um, now, I just gave a, a webinar for Intel uh, yesterday, and one of the things that came out of that, excuse me, it Thursday, yeah, it was yesterday. Um, one of the things that came out of that was um, a couple of the VTune uh, developers and project managers are really interested to see what uh, how we can work better together and closer together. Um, and I know that you know there's a lot of profilers out there and debugging tools and whatnot, but you know at least that's one of them. At least we'll get start you know start getting some making some headway. Um, and Intel sounded like they were really interested in putting some development effort into that. So um, at the moment it's a little tricky. You need to have some debugging tools inside the container, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, hopefully at some point it'll be easier. And we are working on it and aware of it. And, and what is the what is the problem there? I mean, I'm on thin ice, but I, I wanted to debug a Java con a Java program within a container with the Java prof thingy, and uh, it turns out that you need to have binary uh, access to the binary, right? And if you want to run this profiler from outside the container, as you are in the container file system, which is not accessible by this profiler, that's a problem, right? Yeah. Or is it too yeah, simplistic? Exactly. I'm a simple guy. So you have to have that. You have to have that, that profiler inside the container, and it, it's unfortunate because it bloats the size of the container, among other things. But um, it, it's also once you get it working, I mean, I guess you can always rebuild another container and then just you know, leave that part out. But yeah, it's it's not easy. It's not. It's untrivial. But could you create a profiler that swaps namespaces and then? I mean, there was this talk in the DockerCon last year or the year before where someone created top 
that was running the binary was not within the container, but he was just intercepting all the syscalls of uh, of uh, of top, and then forwards the syscalls to the container namespace, and it was pretty awesome because it was just the binary was not within the container, but you could use it as if it would be in the inside of the container, and maybe something like this would apply here as well, or is it also too simplistic to think about it? No, like I think that? you're. 